Well, it looks like there was a big data breach for some Intel BIOS source code. And it at, at this point in time, it doesn't seem like there's any immediate urgent security threat, but this is something that we'll wanna keep an eye on and see how it goes. The statement from Intel is that their a proprietary UEFI code appears to have been leaked by a third party. We do not believe this exposes any new security vulnerabilities as we do not rely on obfuscation of information as a security measure. This code is covered under our bug bounty program within the Project Circuit Breaker campaign and we encourage any researchers who may identify potential vulnerabilities to bring them to our attention through this program. We are reaching out to both customers and security research community to keep them informed of this situation. And as far as I could tell, there didn't seem to be any um, immediate reports of, of a big <laughs> deal from any kind of security researchers or anything like that. Uh, like that. Um, so it seems like uh, Mark Ermolov, who is a security researcher, says that he found secret MSRs, model-specific registers, that are typically reserved for privileged code and thus can present a security problem, along with the private signing key used for Intel's boot guard. Uh, and so that could potentially invalidate that feature. Uh, and it says there are also signs of ACMs, which are authenticated code modules for boot card NTXT, trust execution technology, pretend, uh, portending potential future issues with the root of trust. So basically, it doesn't seem like there's anything out immediately right this second that has caused problems, but there's certainly room for some possible concern in the future. Um, it looks like most motherboard vendors and OEMs would have had similar tools and information uh, available to build firmware for the Intel platforms, like what we just saw here. And again, Intel did claim that they don't rely on obfuscation of for a security measure. So maybe this isn't that big of a deal, but I do want to uh, just bring it out that this is uh, out there and something to kind of keep your eye on. I'm going to be honest, some of this stuff is a little past my... Uh, my area of expertise on, on computer technology. Now, on another note, I reported this in uh, my video on power supplies for the 4090, but in case you missed it, we'll throw it in briefly in the hardware news here as well. While the 4090 actual full reviews should be published tomorrow, uh, we are getting some leaked uh, synthetic benchmarks from 3DMark, and... Um, Overall, you can see how they how the 4090 in AIB version with a little bit of a factory overclock as well as the stock version. And I'm in the way here, aren't I? Eh. Anyway, uh, we can see how they stack up as well as against, you know, previous generations reported in Firestrike Ultra as well as Time Spy Extreme and in 3D Mark Port Royal. So we get the full charts there, but if you look at them in uh, uh, the 4090 versus 3090, we are seeing the Firestrike Ultra showing about a two times performance uplift. And Firestrike Ultra is a DX11 test at 4K, times by Extreme, which is a DX12 test at 4K, is uh, showing a 1.84 to 1.89 times performance uplift versus the 3090. And Port Royal, which is a DX12 ray tracing benchmark at 1440p, is showing a 1.82 to 1.86 times performance improvement. And as I mentioned in my uh, other video, I think it's interesting to see actually that the ray tracing performance was boosted less than the um, non-ray tracing performance when it seemed like the ray tracing improvements were a big aspect of this uh, GPU announcement from NVIDIA. Uh, one possibility is just that the Port Royal benchmark hasn't implemented any of, you know, the the types of ray tracing advantages that this new hardware can, you know, take advantage of. Also, this one test is at 1440p rather than at 4K, so maybe we see extra good 4K scaling. Who knows, but we'll see uh, full reviews out very soon. Now, uh, in a new Moore's Law is Dead video, and then this is being reported on by WCCF Tech, all my sources in the description as usual, uh, showing um, alleged <laughs> look at the RTX 4070. So not the 4080-12 gigabyte that we joke is a 4070, but an actual upcoming card that NVIDIA themselves will call a 4070. And hey, it looks an awful lot like, you know, <laughs> the other Founders Edition coolers. However, 
Uh, he does uh, show it, it looks like, overlaid with an RTX 3080 Founders Edition, so you can get at least a bit of a size comparison. But it didn't look like there was anything too interesting regarding actual specs and performance and pricing and all of that regarding that uh, from what I could see. Now, speaking of some NVIDIA GPU updates, how about an RTX 30 Ti getting updated with GDDR6X memory? We've actually seen rumors of this in the past. Currently, the 3060 Ti has GDDR6 memory, not 6X. Um, but at Scan, uh, who's, uh, you know, Scan is, I think, a UK retailer that sells the Founders Edition uh, GPUs in, uh, in the UK. And apparently, if you actually try to buy a 3060 Ti Founders Edition right now, not on its main page, but I guess as it's being added to your cart, it shows GDDR6X, but this is the only screen where it shows that. But So this could clearly be a typo, but given that we've seen other rumors previously that we could see a 3060 Ti update with GDDR6X, uh, this maybe shouldn't be completely dismissed um, as something that could be happening, could be coming soon. Uh, maybe if if NVIDIA is planning on not releasing, you know, like a 60 series card for the 4000 series anytime soon, maybe they're planning on updating some of their other cards, like the 3060 Ti. Um, I mean, it's something to look at. Now, there's another one that I think is less credible and more likely to just be a typo. Um, now, I don't know why uh, why this WCCF Tech article is mentioning 3060 uh, 8 gigabyte <laughs> uh, with GDDR6X because the screenshot they show is clearly still 12 gigabytes like the normal 3060. However, there have been previous rumors that we might see a 3060 uh, come in with 8 gigabytes again as part of some kind of a weird refresh, but that's still just a rumor. It looks like at the Lenovo shop located in Slovakia, there are uh, there is an RTX 3060 listed with GDDR6X, although it's clearly still 12 gigabytes. So like I said, I don't like that headline. Um, but I mean, it, it is listed with GDDR6X and apparently this shows up um, on multiple screens. But like I said, this one to me sounds like it's more likely to just be a typo. Somebody threw an X in there that shouldn't have. Um, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Now, uh, jumping back over to the 4090, we have been seeing clock speeds showing up going well over three gigahertz. We've seen uh, 3,135 megahertz at a 493 watt peak, but we, it's just a screenshot that doesn't show us exactly under what conditions and in what test uh, that actually occurred. So it's not super useful, but it is pretty interesting to see that at that kind of power level, uh, under 500 watts, uh, being able to get those kinds of clock speeds. Uh, and then we are also seeing a 4090 spotted with 3.2 gigahertz and the memory going up to 25 gigabits per second. So this looks like a pretty heavy overclock. And from the leaked information I've been seeing, it sounds like this one is gonna be not super typical. So this is more of an extreme overclock that not everybody's model is probably going to be able to support, but it's pretty interesting to see. And again, really looking forward to the actual full reviews coming out tomorrow. Um, but we are seeing the 4090 PCB compared to a 3090 uh, TI PCB, and they look very, very similar, although it looks like there's up to 28 uh, phases of power uh, you know, available uh, on the uh, AD 102 Founder Edition PCB, but only 23 are installed, uh, which is further you know, evidence that not only will we get a 4090 Ti, or maybe they'll call it something else, but a fully unlocked uh, uh, Ada Lovelace GPU, but that um, if they do, they could probably use the same PCB, but uh, unlock more of the fa phases and, and, and all of that. Um, and the GPU itself, it looks like they, they have a leaked screenshot here at videocards.com of NVIDIA's AD102 versus their uh, GA102. And um, it's uh, packing in 2.7 times the transistors compared to the GA102. And despite that, it's actually smaller by 20 square 
uh, millimeters. So interesting. Um, now, Intel is talking about their next-gen ARC Battle Mage GPUs, because with their... Uh, <laughs> Uh, remember, not only are we getting the 4090 tomorrow, but we should also be able to buy Intel's ARC A750 and A770. But they're already saying that their ARC Battle Mage GPUs are in substantially better situation uh, than the uh, ARC, uh, the Alchemist GPUs were at this point in development. Um, so it says that at this point, the bulk of their silicon team is working on Battle Mage and platform engineering, and some amount of the software resources are shifting over there as well. It says that they're in their second generation. For the first generation, there wasn't a good reference point for you to compare. So now that you have a reference point, we do have some comparisons. They track the number of open bugs, and when they start the project, they see some performance goals and do pre-silicon verification. So when we look at all of those vectors, they're saying that Battle Mage is in substantially better uh, at this point in time than they were with Alchemist. And that is Raja Kaduri, the head of their um, graphics uh, team over at Intel. Uh, we're also seeing some uh, uh, quotes from Tom Peterson uh, talking about how much of their team is swi switching over there and also how they, they feel like they're not going anywhere on the discrete business. They are sticking around. A lot of people have been talking about them potentially just abandoning uh, discrete GPUs after their difficulties with Alchemist. They're saying that their discrete business is the basic technology development that, go, that goes both into the data center and integrated GPUs. I feel like there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt out there. I'd just like to be clear, we're not going anywhere. Um, so they've, it looks like they feel like this is critical to their, some of their larger like um, data center operations, stuff like that. So if they're going to be having to develop these types of uh, technologies anyway, it makes sense for them to stick around with, uh, with stuff like Battle Mage and, and moving on. So... Anyway, it's sounding like from the folks over at Intel that they, they have no plans on dropping their, um, their GPU <laughs> development or anything like that. Of course, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but <laughs> hey, we're seeing Unreal Engine 5.1 Preview 1 available, and apparently it uh, improves the performance of Lumen and Nanite. And it's now supporting games running at 60 FPS on PC and next-gen consoles. It looks like this is coming from a post at Epic Games' uh, dev community. So this is a preview uh, build rather than one that's been fully beta tested and all of that. But anyway, I'm really curious how Unreal Engine 5 is going to perform because it looks like so many big-name developers are all switching over to Unreal Engine 5 that the performance of... of this engine is going to be everything, you know, a few years from now. Anyway, it's looking like over on Linux, we're seeing some updates to improve uh, the the uh, VA Intel VA API graphics library, which should benefit Arc GPU's performance on lim Linux. And we're also seeing AMD improving CPU power efficiency in Linux OS with new P-State EPP drivers. And I think I forgot to pull up the article, but I also saw some work, more work being done to improve AMD's ray tracing performance on Linux as well. Um, now I'm seeing a new man, a monitor manufacturer getting into the game here. It looks like Red Magic is launching what's uh, the world's first 27-inch mini LED gaming display up to 4K UHD and 160 Hertz. Um, so that's interesting. Haven't heard of Red Magic, so this seems to be a new player in the game. This seems to be mostly like some kind of a press release um, rather than any kind of actual review of what they've got going here, but interesting to take note of. And uh, in the interest of systems requirements that aren't as uh, aggressively demanding as the uh, ones I talked about uh, yesterday in my video for Plague Tale Requiem, we've got Sonic Frontier's uh, PC full system requirements uh, revealed, and it's looking like the minimums are pretty modest with a Core i5-3470 or Ryzen 5 1400, 8 gigabytes of memory, and a G uh, GTX 660 uh, 2 gigabyte or Radeon HD 7870 2 gigabyte, um, and it can run on DX11, but that is only for 720p low, 30 FPS, so you're not going to be getting amazing performance there. And for 1080p high settings at 60 FPS, they're recommending a GTX 1070 or AMD RX Vega 56, um, going up to 12 gigabytes of memory and an i5-6600 or Ryzen 5 2600. And um, this was kind of interesting, um, but I think in the end, it's likely just that Enermax is guessing. Uh, but 
with people thinking about new power supply requirements and all of that, uh, it's looking like the power supply maker Enermax has a power supply tool on their website. So you can plug in your, your PC hardware and it will give you, you know, how many watts it estimates that would use. But when you select the graphics card, they have now updated it to include the Radeon RX 7000 series and the RTX 40 series. And while it is probably true that um, power supply makers probably do get some information ahead of time on the power requirements and, and whatnot for upcoming new graphics cards, uh, that wouldn't be unreasonable. I would be surprised if they had exact uh, numbers correct in all of this, and these are more likely to be estimates, would be my guess. But anyway, um, if, it, <laughs> if you do want to look at some of the... Uh, the GPU TDPs that they are listing, they have the 4090 at 450 watts, the 4080 at 320 to 285 watts, which, uh, you know, we have those official from Intel, uh, sorry, from NVIDIA, but they're listing the 4070 at 285 watts, the 4060 at 200 watts. They're listing the 7950 XT um, at 420 watts, the 7900 XT at 330 watts, the 7800 XT at 300 watts, and the 7700 XT at 200 watts. But again, like I said, I wouldn't read too much into any of this. I have a feeling that they are just kind of using educated guess placeholders, but you never know. I hope all of you have an excellent day.